It is what happens, not what it is, but what happens to this rod bacteria that is significant because it's going into what I then videotaped and captured for the first time that I know of, and I've showed this at Vienna University, I've shown this at Chinua University, I've shown this at Oxford University, and now we're showing this at Harvard University, which has never been seen before, the biological transformation of bacteria into a red blood cell and then bacteria out of the red blood cell. It's reversible. All fluids found in the living world of plants, animals and humans contain a microbe which various scientists have called an endobiont, somatida or oncoexma. It is to be found in all body fluids including the blood, urine, saliva and the seminal fluid. At first this microbe appears in the size of a virus but depending on its environment can mutate to the size of bacteria and under certain circumstances can even manifest itself in the fungal form. The endobiont's purpose in an intact environment is a marginal yet permanent stimulation of the immune system. Deviations from the normal body fluid environment inevitably cause cyclogenetic mutations in the endobiotic viroid microbe, which then mutates from the symbiontic state to parasitical forms and thus indicates the degree of the pathologic state. To provide evidence of this, a blood sample was washed several times to eliminate the serum infestation and then placed in a saline solution and enriched with glucose. After about 10 minutes, the endobiont has escaped from the infracyte into the synthetic environment where it develops itself first into a Y shape and then continues to mutate into a rod shape. Then it divides itself into tiny cocky, which finally emits ball shaped elements into the surroundings. When subjected to an even more extreme change to its environment, the endobiont will even develop into a fungal state, as the following pictures show. A flu is a, uh, is a solvent detoxification. A cold is normally a bacterial detoxification where microbes eat damaged tissue that is of a waste product and when they consume that tissue, they can consume about 50 times their weight 24 hours and they have a waste product of about 1 to 5 percent. So that's like you eating um, uh, 50 pounds of food in one day and having a 1 to 5 pound waste product to deal with the next day. That's a good janitor. Yeah, really? You know, so we want colds. Now, flus occur when people are so toxic that uh, bacteria cannot help break down the toxic waste products that there's, because there's inorganic substances like chemicals from uh, pesticides, uh, fertilizer, you know, inorganic fertilizers, uh, food additives, uh, you know, Pepsi Cola, all those sodas, which are just chemical, they have nothing to do with food. Uh, when those chemicals get in the body and saturate the body and they destroy the bacteria, then our bodies have to use, have to make a solvent or many varieties of solvents to dissolve tissue. So the body may make about 300,000 types of viruses that are specific to a specific tissue within a particular cell so that the whole cell isn't, uh, its integrity isn't disrupted. 
so the whole cell doesn't die. You're just cleaning out, let's say, the veins in a particular area of the cell, uh, whether it be the veins for neuro neurological functions or lymphatic, which is cleansing, uh, or the blood itself within the cell. Uh, so those are specific cleansing viruses uh, for specific areas in the body. Now, no, no time does it ever get to the point where you have more than, let's say, three viruses at a particular time in any particular body. Okay. And this particular case, uh, let's say the swine, so you're talking about a specific tissue of a uh, of a pig and of course a pig is not going to have a, a virus unless it is so toxic from poor feed and vaccines and all kinds of medication that it can't use its natural bacterial cleansing and we have swine flu has ar ar arisen because we have sick pigs out there who cannot the, the necessary viral response is inadequate for them to to take care of their own bodies so they develop they manifest this swine flu correct i mean that's correct okay now they can you can have 300,000 varieties of swine flu because of the different complex 300,000 different types of tissue to be uh cleansed within a pig just like with any any other uh, animal organism however they cannot cross species so how did we get swine flu then? <laughs> it's been made in a factory and injected. Okay. So, so in theory, a virus, first of all, there are good viruses, obviously, as you just all described. All viruses are good okay. viruses. All right, so they're, and they're obviously necessary responses to something that's happening biologically in us. So we know that children need to have fevers. They need to have these childhood illnesses, and historically, that's always been available through diseases like roseola and chicken pox and measles and mumps and they provide a type of gut reset for the child um, a nice high metabolic fever in their gut to clear anything that's been sitting there so any residual undigested proteins or um, viruses or foods or emotions it kind of gives a gut reset um, after the child has these fevers, these really good childhood illnesses, they are often working through something that they're working on. Illness is a natural part of maturation. For instance, with roseola, it's around the time the child's crawling, okay? So the child's trying to develop this new motor skill. They get the roseola, and after they recover from their illness, they're crawling. We see similar things with um, chicken pox and crossing the midline. We see similar things with measles and uh, learning how to read. So it's interesting. We don't have these um, diseases anymore of, of childhood for the most part, and we're seeing an increase in problems with, you know, children don't crawl. They're having difficulty crossing the midline. They're not integrating their um, infant reflexes, and they're dyslexic. So, so in theory, a virus, first of all, there are good viruses, Obviously, as you just All described. viruses are good okay. viruses. All right. So they're, and they're obviously necessary responses to something that's happening biologically in us. Correct. Um, and so the, the, the swine flu virus or any of the, the, the normal viruses that we catch throughout the years, how are they actually, do they incubate in our body and sit dormant until we spread it to someone else? I've never understood where the viruses go. The viruses are like the cicadas to me. It's a mystery. They come out once every seven years, but where are they for the, that six, six point, you know, nine years before they come out? Where do viruses reside? Especially, okay, you know, you're working under a wrong premise to begin with, okay. and you're never going to find the answer if you do that. Okay. Viruses have no nucleus. There's no respiratory system. There's no circulatory system. There's no uh, digestive system. Viruses are not alive. That's like saying Tide soap is alive. Okay. They're not alive. They are solvents. They are soaps. We don't eat well enough. We don't eat all raw, and therefore we accumulate toxicity. So bacteria have to come in and eat that waste products because we're not. We can't keep up with all the waste. Gotcha. But when we are so toxic that the bacteria are poisoned by the tissue from chemical inundation, then we have to make solvents. This each cell makes a solvent. Gotcha. Each cell makes a soap. 
to help clean itself. Okay. And it's a union. It's like a factory. They all particular cells get together and say, let's make this for us to help clean us. So they're making a soap to do that. So there's nothing dormant about it. It's just that when the accumulation of waste is so great and you can't use bacteria, then the cells make a solvent. There you go. Okay. And that's a flu. That's okay. a virus. That is the only way that a human being can get a bird flu or a swine flu is if it is injected in them. We do not have those tissue. Once a animal product goes into our stomach, it no longer holds the animal's tissue. It completely dissolves it and makes it into human tissue. So there's no way we can get a, a swine flu or a bird flu, avian flu, um, any other flu. Years ago, they used to blame it on races, you know, the Spanish flu, the Mexican flu, and right. stuff like that. Right. Then when Rockefeller and Carnegie started taking over the universities in the early 1900s, uh, you know, shortly after that, after the Spanish flu incident, they started blaming everything on animals monkey flu, monkey AIDS, you know, all this stuff. They're always blaming an animal, an unnatural cre I mean, a natural creature. They're always blaming nature. You cannot get a virus into another animal. Viruses are cellularly produced in their whole form. So if a human cell creates a virus, it can only be done inside a human body or in a test tube where you have human cells. So, so there's no, there's no cross species of, uh, of flus. You right. can't do of, of, of viruses. It's impossible. Right. I mean, you can get, you can get a, 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 a herpes from another human being, obviously, but you can't. No, you so can't. Oh, you no, can't. that is false also. The swine, any kind of flu is the same thing. When the climate temperature is right, certain tissues will cleanse, and they may go in a seven-year cycle. They may have a six-month cycle. It depends upon the tissue and how contaminated it is. Mm. If certain tissue needs to clean out every two years, it will create, and you can't use the bacteria, you, your body will create a solvent, a virus, that cleans that particular tissue every two years, every six months, every three months, every seven years, every 12 years, depending upon that tissue and how contaminated it is. The only way people can get swine flu is if they're, they've taken animal, the, the, a, 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 a pig tissue, grown it in a solvent, toxic environment, and then the swine cells create a virus to break itself down okay now let's, okay. Let, okay that it can you can inject it into a human and then you will find those actual swine tissue in there which is where the so virus would end up re having some place to reside then correct yeah, no okay. there's no place to reside because they're not alive to reside okay it's just you have a waste product that now the body has to clean that waste product out of the body and it's going to be very alarmed because you've got foreign tissue in there injected oh, into the body. Okay. That's why Guillain-Barre disease, that's why anaphylactic shock occurs when you inject people with foreign debris, foreign tissue. It goes into shock. It can even die from the shock right. of foreign tissue being injected into you. Okay. All you have to do with fight against the swine flu is never get an injection from a doctor yeah, there you or go. an injection from anybody. Right. The only way you can get any kind of foreign animal tissue into your body is by injection. Yeah, you're right. It makes perfect sense. I mean, that you know, they're pushing that uh, that what is that human papilloma virus uh, vaccine on on a lot of young girls now, and they're trying to make the parents feel uh, guilty if they guilty, don't let their. Yeah. I would yeah. never let my kids get a vaccine of any type whatsoever. Absolutely, they're I, all poison, and there's no record that they ever prevent anything.